All right, what up, y'all? It's Metaphor, back for more to keep the raw. Represent everyone's view and not verse. So we're gonna do a video on, God damn it, Aries rising. But we're gonna do a video on the eighth house of Aries rising. So on the opposite side of Aries, you got motherfucking Libra. So that means the eighth house. <clears throat> so all I'm saying is the first house is Aries, the seventh house would be Libra, then that eighth house would be Scorpio, right? So yeah, <clears throat> the eighth house being Scorpio, it's like. This is, like I say always, this is you no know, original, right? So, initiating, creating new ways of uh, seeing and feeling is your personality, right? But behind the scenes, your eighth house, your secretive, um, you know, secluded space, you know, your, your, um, your things that are kind of like your skeletons in the closet, so to speak, you see what I'm saying? They are already hidden. So, you do this in a transformative way. So, the way that your eighth house is, is actually, you know, is, is perfect. I like to say that... <clears throat> Whenever you act in a scorpionic way, you know, you're able to transform it. So the scorpionic way being fixed water, right? Uh, being um, kind of like, not to say stabilized, but to say consistent on the, okay, uh, stubborn or consistent on the way of feeling. So you're, uh, you're going to stick on this way of feeling. And due to this way of feeling being, um, you know, maybe sometimes so deep and dark that you might not always know the full totality of it. Others kind of see this as the darkness of you. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they see this like, oh, this is that gray area. You see what I'm saying in their in their life, right? So with the Aries rising, this eighth house being, um, like if you think about it, the sixth house being the harvest, the seventh house being um, wherever you kind of deal the harvest, right? You kind of chopped all your corn. Now you don't, you know, put it in a box, you see what I'm saying, it's all organized air, you know, and then you're going to put it in, you're going to give it a, and this is, you know, second house being value, you know what I'm saying, planting, putting the, you know, the first house being the seed, second house planting the seed, the eighth house being, you know, uh, this collection of what is, the, what the seed has produced. So to say that you have, um, I'm trying to think of a good fruit, you know. You have motherfucking, uh, I'm pretty sure strawberries are a fruit. Yeah, strawberries. You have strawberries, you see what I'm saying? You just have a little little, uh, little vine in the ground, you see what I'm saying? And it's going to start to grow, and you're going to have the strawberries blossom, right? And then after all the strawberries have blossomed, you chopped them all off the vines, you see what I'm saying? You got all your strawberries in a bin, you see what I'm saying? You done bought them, and you know what I mean? This is, this is for yourself, you know what I mean? If you're not doing an exchange with that seventh house, you're, you're holding on to with that, uh, you know what I'm saying, and you, you, you have, have your harvest, sixth house, your seventh house, you're able to know, okay, if I were to sell this, you know, this is what it's worth, so let me just hold on to it, because it, it's more worth it to me to just hold on to it, you see what I'm saying, that eighth house, nobody even know you got it, because you ain't put it on, you know, the seventh house, you, the way you related it is, um, <clears throat> in a way that you just like, okay, th this is more worth it, I, I desire this, you know, I'm, I'm, nobody knows, but this is behind the scenes for me, you know, I want to hold on to this, so, yeah. Um, one other aspect you could bring to this, uh, being, you know, if you were to be the one, you know, not cultivating the fruit and actually having it for yourself, you're the one, seven, to say your seventh house is, um, you know, you're, you're, I mean, the seventh house action, which is, you know, that cardinal house, being... You, you want to uh, communicate with this other individual that you see, you know, they have their sixth house harvest, you see them details, and now you relate to them, and then eighth house, you want to procure these goods. So boom, you get the goods, you see what I'm saying, and now, now you uh, spent your own eighth house things, like, you know, your money, and nobody knows what you're going to do with your money, you know, your, your, your values, you know what I mean, your uh, monetary things, you see what I'm saying, nobody really, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, another word, resources, yeah. Nobody knows you're going to spend your resources on, right? <coughs> And see, this is eighth house for you. So boom, you spend your eighth house on these on these resources. I mean, you spend your resources on you know a different kind of source. You know, this is actual food that can sustain your real body. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of two different ways to look at it. Like to say, some people's eighth house would be just getting a whole lot of money. Another person's eighth house would be you know getting their spiritual gifts. You know what I'm saying? Getting through that rebirth and boom, birthing a whole new individual. So that's like that transformation. Hey, and some people transform their whole life with money. This is how it go. You know, um, it's kind of up to you where you want to go with this. So, eighth house is like that, 
you know, like I say, stubborn and consistent. So it's going to be in its own way and it's going to hold on, you know. So if you want to transform something, you know, you bring it to the eighth house and, and you know, it, it, the eighth house holds on to wanting to transform things. So it's like it's always in motion, but it knows that, okay, this is what, this is what we're going to do, though. We, we're going to transform some shit. So boom. Yeah. Um, like I say, Aries is that first house, initiating, creating, you know, new ways of seeing and feeling, being that cardinal fire. And you have your eighth house being Scorpio, that fixed water. Um, I want to say being consistent on your own way of feeling, and uh, you don't really change up too much. So yeah, um, you know, the key here really is I kind of like to tap into the sextiles and the oppositions, you know what I'm saying, to give you a little key. Um, you know, if you really want to tap into your, your the change your business, you tap into your 10th house. I'm just going to give you a little breakdown. If you want to change your schedule, boom, you tap into your 6th house, your earth houses, right? If you want to change your actual value, you tap into that 2nd house, right? To say that, okay, these are the 8th house desires I have now, but if I change my values, I'll have different 8th house desires. So, boom. Yeah, there's the little earth breakdown. Um, and you think about it, like, I was just thinking about how... You know, I was speaking about the eighth house, but we're also, it's also a Scorpio video. So, I was thinking about how Leo and Scorpio uh, square, right? And that pressure comes because Scorpio wants them to play out these visions, but Leo's going to play out their own visions either way. So, that's kind of where that the little square comes from. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think the key here is allowing yourself to, ex allowing yourself to have your, you know, individual expression but also allow others to play out their own expressions and um, not be so focused on that uh, that way of wanting to transform them and make them your own vision, you know what I mean? So boom, yeah, you know, that's kind of where it could be pressure for you. You know, you're obviously your 11th house to be association. Don't try to change all your associates because they're just associates. So yeah, uh, Scorpio in the 8th house and Aries Ross on the back, y'all.